In this video, I'm going to share with you five structural engineering projects that will teach you how to design. I've personally used the skills that I've learned from these projects to design structures worth tens of millions of dollars and have also used them as leverage to land multiple engineering jobs. Today I'm going to share with you exactly how you can get started on each of these projects, what resources you can use to get help along the way, and also give you some ideas about how you can best present these projects in the end. Alright, so the first project that I have on my list is a steel portal frame design. Just so we're all on the same page, a steel portal frame structure is a low-rise structure that consists of regularly spaced frames that are made up of columns and rafters. These steel members are connected by moment resisting connections and each frame is connected by longitudinal bracing as well as purlins and girts. Steel portal frames are a popular choice among industrial buildings because of their ability to enclose large spaces without the need for many internal columns and for this same reason they're popular in a lot of other buildings too. Anyways, to get started on this project I want you to sketch up a gabled roof structure that looks something like this. I want you to give it some dimensions and I also want you to pick a spot on the map close to where you live that you will pretend that this structure is going to be built. To make this a little bit more realistic, let's also draw some more viewpoints and also add in some doors. Okay, so now that you've basically got an architectural set of drawings for this project, let's talk about the engineering side of things. For this particular project, all I'm going to suggest that you do is analyse one single frame. So on the architectural drawings, let's outline the location of each of our portal frames and pick one to analyze. For this project, I'm gonna suggest that we put a portal frame at each end and one between each door. At this point, everything on the engineering side is basically set up too, so you just need to pick a frame and get started. Now, just so it's super clear, for this particular project, the output that you're trying to get is the column and rafter member sizes and also the location of any fly braces. Okay, now, if you've never done this before, where can you go for help along the way. Well, for all things steel design, my favourite book to go to is called The Design of Portal Frame Building. This book starts from the very beginning and outlines everything from calculating your loads, setting up your load cases, and of course, optimising the member size. This particular book is catered to the Australian standards, but the general design procedures are applicable anywhere. Of course though, this isn't the only option when it comes to steel design books, there are plenty of other ones too, and I'll leave a link to some of them in the description, and anything else I mentioned in this video too. Okay, now at the end of all this work, you want to have something to show for it, and the best way I think you can showcase your work is by making a portfolio. For example, this is what my personal portfolio looks like, and if you want to use it as a template, I'll leave a link to it in the description. Anyways, what you should do now while you're actually working on the project is work on the presentation so you can get the photos that'll actually go into your portfolio. So for this particular project, this can be things like a screenshot of the model you made in the design software, or a sketch of the building you analyzed. You can really choose to do whatever you want here because it does come down to personal preference, but be sure to get a few options because you'll be able to choose the best ones later. Alright, and the next project is a cantilever retaining wall design. Again, this is a super common structural element that appears on a lot of different projects and it's a really good one to learn because it combines a lot of different skills. To get started on this project, I want you to sketch up a classic looking retaining wall that looks something like this. Then I want you to give it some dimensions and choose some soil and loading parameters. By the way, these dimensions are just a starting point and you will need to adjust them and actually design design them during the design process. Anyways, from here you've basically got everything you need in order to get started, so the rest is up to you. For this particular project, the expected output would be a sketch of the retaining wall dimensions and also the reinforcement required in both the wall and the footing. Alright, now similar to steel design, textbooks can be your best friend when it comes to learning a new design procedure and I will link a couple in the description specifically for retaining wall design, but I've actually got something personal that I can recommend here. On my channel, I've posted a full video on retaining wall design and in that video I give you a complete overview of the basic concepts. I've also made a guide and Excel spreadsheet which combines all the info you need to know in order to be able to design a retaining wall. If you're interested in checking out my video or my personal resources, I'll leave a link to both in the description. Okay, now again we're looking for things that we can showcase on our portfolio. For a retaining wall design, this could be your final sketch with the dimensions and the required reinforcement, or it could be a working drawing during your calculations when you're trying to do the stability checks and you're showing the loads on the wall. Again, there's no rules here on what you want to 
do. So the more creative you can be, the better your project will appear. Hey everyone, I hope that you're enjoying the video, but I wanted to quickly interrupt to tell you about a friend of the channel and the sponsor of today's video, SkySiv. For those of you that haven't heard of SkySiv, it's a cloud-based structural engineering design and analysis software that runs completely from your web browser. This means that you don't need to do any software updates or download any apps to get started, and you can instantly access SkySiv on any device by simply logging into your account. Within SkySiv, there are several design and analysis modules that can help you with the design of individual members and their connections, and it also has a 3D FEA frame builder that allows you to model entire steel frames, as well as concrete structures. In addition to these features, SkySiv also recently added a new Quick Design Library. In the Quick Design Library, there are heaps of optimized design and analysis modules that have been tailored to different codes. Each model in this library offers a concise and clean way to carry out design checks and has a strong focus on ease of use and speed of output. Personally, I think this library is super useful for doing quick checks throughout the day and can be really handy for learning new design procedures. I also really like that even though these modules are condensed, you still have the option to go deep into the calculations like in SkySiv's usual modules. In terms of pricing, SkySiv offers a range of different plans both in month to month and contract formats and they also offer heavily discounted plans for students. Also, if you're solely interested in the Quick Design Library, you can get a standalone subscription to that too. So if you're interested in giving SkySiv a go or you want to learn more, be sure to check them out using my link in the description where you'll be helping to support the channel and you can also access an extended 30-day free trial. Thanks again to SkySiv for sponsoring this video and let's get back to it. All right, and the third project is a roof and floor framing layout for a timber framed house. Now, while this project doesn't sound too special and it's not really something by itself that will stand out on your portfolio, it is an important skill to have because it allows you to go into more complex things later that will stand out on your portfolio, like entire house designs. Anyways, to get started on this project, you need to find a house floor plan. A couple of ways you can do this is by simply Googling something like house architectural plans PDF or even just going to a real estate website and taking the floor plans from the ads. Once you've got these floor plans the setup is done and you can start marking up the layouts. If you choose to do a roof framing plan the output would be the truss and rafter layout indicating which walls are load bearing, showing where you need columns and also marking up where you require any lintels or other roof beams. On the other hand, if you choose to do a floor framing plan, the output here would be marking up the joist layout, any bearer positions, and also marking up any lintels or columns. In terms of resources for this project, I think the best thing that you can do is look at examples. On Google Images, if you just search something like structural framing plan layouts, you'll find heaps of different examples, but perhaps if you're brand new to this, the best way to get started would be to watch some basic framing videos on YouTube, just to make sure that you understand the basics. All right, and the next project is a steel roof bracing design. As I mentioned earlier, steel portal frames are super popular, and besides the frames themselves, Self, you also need to know how to design the bracing system. So going back to our steel portal frame drawings from earlier, this project is designing the bracing between bays. For this particular project, I'm going to suggest that you just design the horizontal bracing in the roof, and for simplicity, you just go for a traditional bracing layout that looks something like this. Once you've got this layout sketched up, you're pretty much ready to go, and from here you've got to start working out your forces and size the members. Again, if you need guidance on how to get started, I'm going to direct you to my trusty portal frame design book which will step you through the entire process and cover everything that you need to know. Like I said earlier there's probably plenty of other textbooks out there that cover this same process but this is my personal favorite and it's quite popular in Australia. In terms of presentation there's two suggestions I've got for you and the first one is a screenshot of the design program you use to model the truss and perhaps you can turn on the axial force results and the second one is to actually just do a screenshot of the building that you've analyzed this truss for. Okay and the last project is a reinforced concrete pad footing design. Pad footings are yet another super common structural element and the reason I like this project is because the general principles can be applied to a lot of other structural elements too like strip footings, ground beams and even suspended slabs. To get started on this project start by drawing a rectangular
circular column followed by a surrounding square pad footing. After this you need to pick a number for the force that would be coming down from the column and also an allowable bearing pressure for the soil. With this information you've got everything you need to work out the plan dimensions of your pad footing and from there you can continue with a reinforced concrete design to work out your depth and required reinforcement. For guidance on the design of pad footings I'll put some links in the description to textbooks I've used for that and I'll also put some links in the description for the reinforced concrete design side too as well as my own personal notes and spreadsheet. In terms of presentation on this one I think if you just have a sketch of the pad footing with the required reinforcement that'll pretty much have you covered. Anyways if you're interested in learning how to present this stuff on either your resume or portfolio you should check out either of these two videos here where I give you a complete walkthrough of how I made each of them. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.